Hello, good evening. It's Dr. Chidi Ufundu of Snowspirations. Thank you and welcome to today's YouTube live stream. Today we're going to talk about Staphylococcus aureus infection and if it's possible to have effect on the fertility of a female and a male and if it can delay a woman from becoming pregnant. So this is a very popular infection out there, especially in developing countries. So it's possible that if you're listening to me this afternoon, this evening, they must have given you a diagnosis of staph aureus. You might have gone to the lab by yourself or your provider sent you to the lab and you've been treating staph aureus. And they've told you that the reason why you don't have a baby today is because of staph aureus. So what we're going to do this evening is to see if there is actually a merit in regards to that claim about staph aureus preventing you from becoming pregnant, both from the males and the females. So I wanted to sit back and listen to my presentation. Then afterwards, I'm going to take care of your questions. So thank you for coming. I hope you're enjoying our channel. Please, if today is the first day of attending our clinic, make sure you click on the subscription button and also set the notification so that anytime I come live, you will participate. So let's quickly knock this off and understand better what staph aureus infection is all about. So what's staph aureus? So you see, staph aureus is a type of bacteria infection. Remember that generally we have different types of infections. So we can have viral infection, we can have bacteria infection, we can have fungal infection, we can have parasitic infection. So staph aureus is a type of bacteria infection. Now, staph aureus begins to be a concern through the route of opportunistic infection. So opportunistic infection means if anything happened to your immune system, remember every day we go out there, we are exposed to bacteria, viral, fungal, parasitic infection. But when you have a very strong immunity, you will not come down with those infections. But in staph aureus infection, if for some reasons your immune system got damaged, then you are predisposed to having this infection and it can be very aggressive. Now, for everybody out there, you have staph aureus in your skin, in your nose, in your armpit, in your pharynx, and in your urogenital system. About 20% of human beings out there actually have staph aureus in their body, going about their business. They wouldn't even know they have it. Now, most people will not have any problems. However, if you have any sore or any cut in your skin and staph aureus gains access to your skin, they can cause infection. So they can lead to boils. They can lead to blisters. If they are found in the lungs, they can lead to pneumonia. If they are found in the blood, they can lead to sepsis. If they are found in the wound, they can lead to wound infection. But if you don't have any of this, and it's just in your skin, in your nose, in your armpit, in your pharynx, they will not cause any problem. Now, the bigger question is, can staph aureus stop a woman from becoming pregnant? Can staph aureus stop a man from impregnating the wife? The answer is what? No, it's not confirmed. There is no evidence to support the fact that if you have staph infection, it will stop you from becoming pregnant. Now, if it can cause problems in this regards, what are the population of people that might have a greater chance of getting the infection? Remember that the people that will have the infection are the people that have what? Depressed immune system. So if you are sick, then on top of the fact that you are sick, you are also admitted in the hospital. You have a risk factor of developing staph aureus. If you are recently recovering from surgery or medical procedure, you also have an, a likelihood of developing staph infection. If you live in an overcrowded condition, a shelter, a prison, if you have a kid in daycare, if you use intravenous drugs, if you have weakened immune system, there are some people that have what we call autoimmune dis disease. So your body is fighting your body. If you have any of this, you have an increased probability of having this staph infection. If you have chronic medical condition, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, or any of those conditions, 
you are also depressing your immune system. So anytime you depress your immune system, you are increasing the likelihood of having staff infection. If you're into sports, if you're in the military, the possibility you will also have an increase in picking up staff infection is very high. Now that's for staff infection to the route I mentioned. Now staff infection is also implicated in food poisoning. Remember back home in Nigeria, when we talk about poisoning, you know, people will believe that, oh, someone put something in your food to kill you. But that's not what we're talking about in medical practice. In food poisoning, if the food you're eating is contaminated with bacteria, with viral, with fungal, parasitic infection, you can have food poisoning. Most food poisoning will present with severe diarrhea, severe vomiting, and severe stomach ache. Thankfully, this can last for just a few hours and you can quickly recover and you won't have any problem. So when you're having food poisoning, stop eating that food, drink a lot of water, make sure you open your bowels, vomit whatever you can vomit, then replace them. So staph in infection can also lead to what? Food poisoning. Now the bigger overarching question is, can staph oral infection affect your fertility? And like I said, the jury is back. There is no direct relationship between your staph oral and your ability to become a pregnant woman, and also to become a father. Now, I have a question here. This lady is pregnant. If her partner or her family member or a friend has a confirmed skin staph infection, what can she do to reduce her chance of picking the infection? Just observe personal hygiene. Number one, don't touch that person's saw. Don't touch the cup. Don't touch the bandages. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Always wash your hands after direct contact with anyone who has skin infection. So anytime you are pregnant, remember that the state of pregnancy can predispose you to having a lot of problems. Now, don't share any of your towels. Don't share your soap. Don't share your razor. Don't share your tweezers. Don't share any personal lighter with anybody that might likely have skin infection. Even when you're doing your laundry, be careful. Avoid contact with that person that has skin infection. Now, some people will also ask, does having staph infection increase your possibility of having miscarriage? The jury is also back. There is no direct relationship between miscarriage and staph oros. And some people will also ask, when you have staph oros, are you likely going to have increase in having birth defects? So birth defect means when a baby is born, the baby might have some problems with the organs. And as of today, there is no direct relationship between staph oros and developing birth defects. Now, some people will also wonder if there are a couple of other complications that can happen in pregnancy. The only one worthy of mention. Remember when your baby is developing, your baby is developing in the amniotic sac. The amniotic sac contains the amniotic fluid. If for some reason you have staph infection and this staph infection also affected the amniotic fluid, you can actually have preterm delivery of your baby. Remember that any baby that is born before 37 weeks is called what? Preterm babies. So besides that, when you have this infection in the mother, it can affect the bad before 37 weeks. But besides this, there is no other way we can connect staph oral infection and an infection or complication in pregnancy. Now, can it generally make it hard for the man to become pregnant? No. Can it make it hard for the woman to become pregnant? No. But there are so many outlandish claims out there that, oh, the reason why I don't have a baby is because of staph infection. But it's not true. It's a myth. It's a falsehood. So next time, you are tempted to waste your money on antibiotics, to waste your money. Going to places that will tell you, oh, the reason why you don't have a baby is because you have staph oral. Query them. There is no merit in that particular claim. Staph oral does not have any inclination in stopping you from becoming pregnant. Straight facts. No merit in the whole claims. Okay? So I'm going to open the clinic now, and I'm going to take care of your questions. So please go ahead and ask your questions, and I'll give you feedbacks. Remember, if today is the first day of attending our clinic, we run this clinic every Tuesdays by 7 p.m., just 30 minutes, then every Saturday by 12 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Nigerian time on Saturdays. So if you're not able to participate in real time, you can always wake up tomorrow and you can review 
the presentation. So make sure you click on that notification. Make sure you subscribe. Now the clinic is going to open and I'm ready to start taking care of your questions. So please go ahead and ask your questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. It's important to understand the need to avoid wasting your time, wasting your money, wasting your emotions, staying up late in the night, worrying that the reason why you don't have a baby is because of stuff. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so please ask your questions. We tackle your questions. Then we get ready for Saturday for another topic. Saturday, we're going to talk about Clomid. And you need to learn a lot about Clomid in regards to your fertility. But for now, please go ahead and ask your questions on staff hours, your fertility, and your pregnancy. Okay? Do you have any questions? Please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and provide your feedbacks. So by and by, everybody out there has staff infection in them. But it doesn't cause any problem until you begin to have problems with your immune system. Okay, is staph infection common? No, it's not common. What's common is staph aureus, the organism. It's common in virtually everybody. But the infection itself, it's not common. You can only have the infection if you have the conditions I mentioned. So if you're sick and you're admitted in the hospital, if you have an ongoing chronic medical condition, cancer, diabetes, if, you're, if you have a child in daycare, if, if you have a compromised immune system, you can actually have this. So by default, listen to me carefully. Remember that the state of pregnancy can depress your immune system, right? So by default, pregnant women might have a slight increase in possibility of picking staph infection. But here's the deal. Most of the infections you will have from staph aureus will be on the skin, on the armpit or on the lungs, not directly in regards to your reproductive system. Remember the claim is, oh, once you have staff, you're not going to have a baby. It doesn't make sense. So in the real sense, we are all exposed to so many bacteria out there, but it will not cause an infection until we are compromised in regards to our system, our immune system. Very beautiful question. I love that. So please go ahead and keep asking your questions and I'll keep providing you feedbacks. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. The reason why we chose this topic is to encourage our members to make sure they are not wasting their funds, the relative money you don't have. Instead of going to that lab, instead of going to the person that will give you the antibiotics you don't need, please save that money and see a fertility specialist. And there are so many dangers in self-medication. When you are self-medicating, you are not helping yourself. Let me tell you why. We all have what we call the normal flora. So everybody has the good bacteria in their body. So once you're opening your mouth, once you're stepping out there, there are some bacteria that will help you to function properly. So we have bacteria in the mouth, we have bacteria in the stomach, we have bacteria in the anal region. They are there doing their own thing. We also have some bacteria in the vagina, the lactobacilli. They help to maintain the environment of our body. Now the problem is, when you begin to abuse antibiotics, the good bacteria that should be protecting you will be killed. When they are killed, they will make room for the bad bacteria that will now come and cause your infection. So be careful. And besides that, when you begin to abuse antibiotics, over time, you're going to develop resistance. So what's resistance? When you have a need for a particular antibiotics in the future for a particular infection because your body is already exposed to that antibiotics and somehow adapted to that antibiotics that antibiotic is not going to be effective so when you go abusing drugs you might likely have drug resistance in the future so please avoid abusing anti-malaria avoid abusing antibiotics avoid abusing reproductive medications if you don't have a need for a drug, please don't use it. If your doctor, doctor didn't prescribe it, please do not use them. You are not helping yourself. Okay? Do we have any other further question on this topic? It seems a pretty relatively straightforward topic. So if we don't have any other question in regards to this, I hope you understood it better. 
I hope when you go out there tomorrow and someone is talking about staff being the reason why a woman is having difficulties, having a baby, you can comfortably and reliably and with facts and evidence query them. When next they tell you that the reason why you don't have a baby today is because of staff, tell them no. What you need to do is to make sure you meet with a fertility specialist, both you and your partner. We investigate and see what we can discover that might be the problems. Ebenezer, you're just coming in now. Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Can I, if you have any other further questions, feel free to ask. If we don't, then we are going to call it a day. But thank you for coming. Hopefully, on Saturday, we're going to talk about Clomid. Okay. How does staff reproduce? Okay, you're talking about the lifespan and, you know, how staff, staff is a bacterial infection by default. Like I mentioned, it's a healthy bacteria on the skin, on the nose, on the armpit. So they are there by default doing their thing. They can only cause a problem when we have a break in the skin or a sore or a wound and they go into the wound. They can have access to the wound. They can go to your bloodstream. They can go to your lungs and begin to cause problems. So by default, everybody out there has staff in their body doing their thing. They are not bothering us until we begin to have problems with our immune system. Okay? So if you have any other further question, please feel free to ask. Okay. Do you have any other question? Okay? All right. Okay. So please, before we go today, remember to subscribe. Remember to click, click on the notification button so that you will have a prompt whenever we come live. We normally come live every Tuesdays by 7 p.m. for 30 minutes. Then on Saturdays by 12 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Nigerian time. So keep a day with us. The next clinic is going to be on Saturday. Make sure you practice. Make sure you pray. Make sure you play. Playing means 48 hourly lovemaking. Praying definitely, you talk to God every day. Then practicing means everything we discuss. Make sure you put them into practice. Now, on the 28th of this month, we have a special event for all the women and men that will become parents in 2022. We, it's more like an opportunity to have an overview of the whole 2021, our journey. What are we going to do differently? Some people might need IUI, some people might need IVF, some people might need surrogacy, some people might need to adopt. So if you are still having problems becoming a father, becoming a mother, keep a day with us on the 28th. Make sure you come together as a couple. Be ready to practice. Be ready to take your both steps. Some people are going to go for IVF. Some people are going to go for IUI. And suddenly they can complete their family. So I encourage you to be on the lookout. Hopefully from tomorrow we are going to release the details so you can register. But keep your 28th of November open for the retreat that will change the aspect of your family. Thank you for coming this evening. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Bye-bye for now.